I'm really excited about today's state for, for a bunch of reasons. We're going to be doing some really fun stuff later on in the episode. But, but one of the first things I want to really shout out is that I've been making videos about trees for over two years now. And this very common and widespread tree is one that I've not even brought up once in a single video. So I'm, I'm really excited to dive in. Today, it's the great state of New York, which I'm making out of a piece of wood from the American beach, Vegas grandifolia. This large and stately tree, notable for its attractive smooth gray bark and widespreading canopy is well admired throughout its native range of Eastern North America. It's a shade tolerant species that grows quite large and is commonly found in forests of sugar maple, yellow birch, and Eastern hemlock, typically on slopes and rich bottomlands. Beech trees are also well known for their edible nuts, which grow in these little spiky balls that open up and drop the small beech nuts within. These tasty seeds can be eaten raw or cooked and are enjoyed by humans and wildlife, with one notable example being the now extinct passenger pigeon. Beech seeds were a primary food source for the bird, and during migration periods, they were known to congregate on beech branches in such great numbers that their sheer combined weight would often break the limbs clean off the tree. It's not just the tree's seeds that are edible to humans, though. Its young springtime leaves can be cooked and eaten, its inner bark can be dried and pounded into a flower and was sometimes used as a viable food source for leaner times. The American beech experienced a great deal of deforestation once Europeans began to colonize the continent. The tree was associated with fertile soils and thus was often cleared out to make way for farmland. In fact, this loss of habitat was one of the factors that contributed to the aforementioned extinction of the passenger pigeon. As a landscaping or ornamental tree, the American beech is considered a beautiful provider of excellent shade, although they're so slow low growing, the planting one is considered a gift not for oneself, but for a future generation to enjoy. That said, if you encounter a beech tree within urban environments, it's far more likely to be the European beech, as it not only grows much faster, but is also more tolerant of pollution. In fact, a notable cultivar of the European beech in New York was the weeping beech tree in Flushing, Queens. It was planted in 1847 as the first weeping beech in the country, and was one of two trees in New York City to eventually be designated a living landmark. It died in 1998, but it's believed that every weeping beech in the United States is one of its descendants. Last but not least, the American beech is also used for its wood. It's highly versatile and a pretty cost-effective alternative to something like hard maple. It's used in everything from furniture to flooring, crates and pallets, cabinetry, small handmade items, and a whole lot more. Speaking of the wood, I, I had some of it left over and was trying to think of something interesting I could make with it for this episode. And since it's New York we're making, I thought it might be finally time to try to make something that's been on my list forever. Namely, some bagel boards. More on what they actually do in a bit, but the goal here is to simply cut four equal sized planks to about three and a half inches wide. The length of your board is going to depend on the width of your baking stone. You want the board to be about a half inch longer than your stone is wide. My stone is 20 inches long by 13 and a half inches wide, so the boards will be 14 inches long. Basically, you just want your boards to overhang the stone by a little bit when you put them into the oven. And as far as projects go, this is a pretty simple one, so long as you have just some basic tools. I'm using my absolutely terrible table saw, uh, but you don't even need one of those. You could make this with nothing more than a handsaw and some halfway decent lumber from your lumber yard if you really wanted to. Now that the planks are cut and sanded, we'll leave them unfinished and it's time to get some burlap. You want something high quality with a nice tight weave and food grade, meaning no harsh chemical finish on it. I had a hard time confirming that without buying like gigantic rolls of the stuff from specialty online shops. So I just washed and then boiled mine and I'm gonna hope for the best. Good soup. Then it's just a matter of stapling the burlap onto the board. Make sure you pull it nice and taut so that it's not overly loose. These will probably stretch and loosen out a little bit throughout throughout time. So it just helps to, you know, get that, just get that a little bit of a, a, a tug there. And that's it. We've got four completed bagel boards here. So I, I guess end of episode, right? No, of course, of course I'm going to make some bagels, guys. Come on. I'm going to start by making a biga by combining 150 grams of warm water, a couple pinches of instant yeast, and 225 grams of bread flour. Combine until the flour is fully hydrated and then cover and let it ferment at room temperature for 12 to 24 hours. Once it's looking nice and ready, we're going to add 400 grams of warm water to a bowl and then add all of the biga and break it down to the water. Once that's done, we'll add 700 grams of bread flour, a teaspoon of instant yeast, 10 grams of diastatic malt powder, 20 grams of kosher salt, and stir until it becomes a shaggy ball. Empty it out onto a clean work surface, which I forgot to film, and then knead for 10 to 12 minutes, only adding flour 
flour if you're encountering just a bunch of stickiness. Main thing here is to just work up that gluten. Keep kneading until smooth and elastic and you pass the good old window pane test. Then form into a ball and leave it in a covered bowl at room temperature for an hour or two until doubled in size. Knock out some of that excess gas and then turn it onto a clean surface and divide the dough into 125 gram pieces. You should have about a dozen. I ended up with more like 11 and a little baby one. Now we've got a very satisfying step in which we pre-shape them into balls by pinching one end into kind of like a teardrop shape and plopping them seam side down. Then with a loose grip, roll them around on the surface until you get a tight little ball. Cover with a damp towel and just let them rest for about five minutes and then it's time to make bagel shapes. The traditional method is to roll them into a short rope, tapering the ends and then wrapping around your hand and pinching those ends together. Then just kind of roll it around your hand and fusing it into a, a bagel shape. This is going to give them that more lopsided look that is more traditional, but if, you, if you're feeling intimidated by this, you can also just punch a hole right in the middle with your finger and just kind of roughly shape it into a ring. This method was definitely easier, but I, I mixed it up and we'll see which one turns out better. Either way, you want to make sure to avoid a hole that's too small as the bagels will puff up during the rise and the bake, but also don't go too big. You want to look for a nice sweet spot, which I personally had a tough time nailing in, but that's what practice is for. Place them onto a parchment lined baking sheet brushed with oil and cover with plastic wrap and a damp towel and let them hang out in the fridge for preferably overnight up to 24 to 48 hours. Two hours before you're ready to bake, you're going to want to preheat your oven with the baking stone inside at 475 degrees. After that, pull a sheet out of the fridge and see if your bagels are ready by performing a quick float test. If they sink, then just let them hang out and rise up a bit more or keep testing until they, until they float. All right, we passed the float test with flying colors, which means these babies are ready to boil. That also means I'm about to enter pure chaos mode. I've got my bagel boards here. We're gonna get these nice and wet. We've got our 475 degree oven with our baking stone in there, all ready to go. It's been preheating for over an hour. We've got a pot of water on coming up to boil right now. I've got my topping station ready to go. I'm gonna boil these over there, bring them back, add the toppings, put them on our wet bagel boards, throw them in the oven, and hopefully, hopefully, we're gonna have some perfect bagels, so. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, I am very nervous, but let's get to it. All right, we've got our large Dutch oven filled halfway with boiling water, and now we're gonna add about a quarter cup of malt syrup. You can really just eyeball this. You, you're aiming for a coloring similar to a very strong iced tea. Add a teaspoon of baking soda, skim off some of that excess foam, and once you get to a nice rolling boil, it's time to add our bagels. Cook for 30 seconds on each side before removing them, and this is where my applewood spider comes in handy. I carved this from my apple cider donut YouTube shorts, so you know, donuts, bagels, fishing rings out of pots, it's still doing the job. Now here comes another fun step. We get to add our toppings, which is as simple as just dipping the kind of rounded side down into our little stations here. Then just place them topping side down onto our wet bagel boards. Oh, and it's the tiny little baby one from just the little bit of dough I had at the end. The bagel boards go directly onto the baking stone for three to four minutes, and then it's time for a quick flip. And then after another 15 to 20 minutes, they should be a nice, deep, gorgeous golden brown. And there we have them, homemade bagels ready to knock your socks clean off. I mean, I mean, just look and listen to this. So I actually really prefer the way the traditional shaped bagels turned out. They puffed up a bit more. They've just got a nice rounder shape. The ones where I just punched a hole right in the middle just turned out a bit flatter, a lot wider. Uh, a lot of that's probably my fault, but ultimately I, I really think that the traditional shaping is the way to go. It feels a little bit more difficult, but uh, I got the hang of it toward the end. Bagels are meant to be eaten same day, so I'm gonna take all the extras, freeze them, and then you can just pop them out, defrost them, and then give them a little toast and enjoy them for later. The mini bagel turned out great. I'm just gonna bite into it. Mm. That is a certified snack, but my favorite way to eat a bagel is a breakfast bagel, so let's go get some eggs. I'm kind of a rainy morning. I woke up way too early today and I am genuinely the most excited for this. So let's dive in. This sandwich changed my life. Hey Sal. This is mine. Sal. Now, 
Do you need bagel boards to make bagels at home? Absolutely not. You can make them on a baking sheet, you can make them on a pizza stone, you can make them however which way you want. But did these bagel boards make this the best breakfast sandwich I've had in my entire life? Who's to say? I don't know, maybe. You certainly can't disprove that they didn't. And now all we have left to do is get our finished New York up onto the board. And I really like this piece. I, I, I mean, New York has a great shape to it. We've got a little bit of spalting on there, which always makes me happy. This piece, those bagel boards, and especially those bagels, are a really great way to honor the American beach. I hope to be talking about this tree again sometime soon. But for now, tell me which state and or tree you want to see on this map next.